Well, thank you for joining us. And could you tell us a bit about yourself, your research interests? Well, I'm um, I'm a classicist, so that means I, I profess the classics. I teach mainly ancient Greek literature, um, although I I was trained in both Greek and Latin. Um, my interests are um, Hellenic, uh, and and that is not really to do with my descent, my, my the fact that I am of Greek origin, but I I'm interested in, in Hellenic culture and its reception and almost everything under the Greek sun. Um, of course, I'm a words person, so I, I don't really um, um, occupy myself with, with objects. I, I decided very early um, in, in university as an undergraduate that I was not a, a, a things person, so I, I liked words as objects of, of study. So I do Greek, I, I teach ancient Greek literature um, and language, uh, ancient Greek. I'm um, very concerned about the Greek language nowadays, although I'm not a modern specialist. Um, I think we, we have to attend to the Greek language as it's spoken and written today um, in the interest of, of keeping in touch with the larger Greek heritage, not so much our roots uh, as Greek speakers, but it's very, very easy to, lo to lose your grip on, your, on Greek reality um, and the Greek thought world if you cannot um, speak and write Greek properly. Um, speaking and writing uh, in any language is, is a difficult task. And, and my colleagues across the Atlantic and the United States and in the UK often um, complain about shoddy prose uh, written by their undergraduates or their postgraduate students. And generally, people are less literate despite the, the explosion in the um, IT um, industry. Um, people, my, my um, my bunch of students, my, my lot, um, are very much attuned to the word on the screen, or generally to things that appear on, on the screen and, and not, not a book. And that's what um, distresses me at times. So, come back to your original question, what, what, I, what do I do? I, I teach Greek um, in a provincial university in the northeast of Greece, and I mean provincial by, by dint of, of geography. Sometimes it, it can be provincial um, in other ways, but that is the case throughout the world. Even the most metropolitan, bustling universities um, can be um, one-sided and little islands of, of um, isolationism and uh, trendiness and so forth. So, um, I, I came to Greece in 1990 um, after several years in, um, in a British university and I, I was teaching in, in Britain. I came here, um, it was quite a challenge uh, because I really didn't have very many connections to the uh, academic world uh, in Greece, but I, I was uh, fortunate to find a, a job um, eventually in, in the University of Thrace, the Democritian University. And when I told my supervisor, that Kenneth Dover, that I, I was going to be teaching in Thrace uh, in Alexandroupolis, he said, my gosh, that sounds exciting. I said, well, it is. I, I don't quite have a library. He said, that's even more exciting. You, you'll be able to build up a library. <laughs> and he said, the only thing that distresses me is Democritus was a materialist. Do you mean to say that you're sort of lapsing into materialism and, and um, philosophical materialism? I said, no, no, far from it. Um, Kenneth Dover, as a matter of fact, paid a visit to Thrace um, in the late 90s. It was, I think, 1996. He was very happy. He was elated. 
we went to various parts of the province, including the uh, Muslim section, and he was well received there. He was all dressed as a, an English gentleman um, in, a, in a summer suit on a hot uh, June day, um, and he um, was very excited about meeting the, the local mayor, the mayor in the village, uh, a Pomak village. These Pomaks are um, Bulgarian-speaking Muslims, um, mainly based in, in the Rodopi uh, province. Um, so, um, I say all this by way of, of sort of hinting at the, the, the um, clash of worldviews and expectations and, uh, that one encounters when leaving a university in the Occident, in the West, and you, you assume that uh, the Occident is, is now, the West is, is the hub of civilization, the navel of everything good. Um, and then you go to a provincial university in the, um, in the Balkans, in southeastern Europe, and you think, oh gosh, this is going to be um, a rough time. But you, you come to realize that you're, in many ways, very lucky. Um, because you, you, you come to, to, to see how, how heroic and inter enterprising uh, people are, students and, and uh, teaching staff alike, against staggering odds. I mean, one um, who, you know, my colleagues um, who teach in, in North American universities in the United States, for instance, um, they have all these creature comforts. And I'm, I'm not at all envious, but I'm just saying they have these, they have many blessings, um, many boons, um, and they sort of have the, the embarras, embarras, embarrassment of uh, choice, embarrassment de, de choix, uh, embarras de choix. But, um, you know, I, if, if, you, if you compare what they have from day one, and what an ordinary uh, professor has in, in the north of Greece at my university, you come to realize that we in the north um, are, are doing extraordinary things um, under very difficult circumstances. And nowadays things get even, uh, even more straightened because of the so-called crisis, um, which is not so much a crisis, it's not the culmination, yet it seems to be a sort of stabilized, uh, crystallized situation um, to which we must become resigned. Uh, we have to work around it and past it, um, but um, this is the, the case in, in Greece and it, it may be the case in other parts of the world. So, um, I pay tribute to my colleagues in the north of Greece and my students and um, I do hope that we can carry on having this flow of students, thanks to the Erasmus program, um, and staff, teaching staff, this mobility agreement um, between EU countries. And I, I, I hope also that colleagues in North America and South America, and the Americas generally, will continue coming to Greece, to my university. But Brazil uh, is and has been a very um, happy and fruitful period in my life. Um, I, I'm, I was well acquainted with North America, um, by which I mean the United States, and when I was an undergraduate um, at Harvard um, in the late 70s, I visited Mexico. I spent, well, close on six months there um, because I wanted to become a social anthropologist. So I had a, a foretaste of, of Iberian languages, and I, I, I did have some Spanish, very rudimentary Spanish, um, and that was in the late seventies. And then you know, fast forward, and uh, here I am um, in the late um, well, in, the, in well, in, in two thousand thirteen, close to sixty years of age pretty late in life, but then I discover 
the rest of the Americas or part of the Americas. So I, I was, um, I, I, you could say that I benefited by the, the kindness, the generosity, the, the, the invitation of um, the uh, University of São Paulo, um, USP, uh, the Department of Classics in the year 2013. I spent uh, two months teaching classics. Um, I did a, a Homer course, a class in, in um, the Odyssey. It was mainly Odyssey 8, the, the rhapsody about the uh, ferocious uh, cyclops. And it, it wasn't quite by design, but I was quite interested also in, in the um, anthropological phenomenon of cannibalism strange ethnic monsters. So this fed my interest, this, this combination of being in Brazil and teaching um, um, Odyssey 9. So since then, I, my, my research, <coughs> such as it is, because one sort of splits oneself into multiple uh, <laughs> um, academic and real life personalities, you become a multitasker. Um, so my, my research is to do with monsters um, in Homer and he said select monsters and select topics um, and I owe this almost entirely to those initial three months in Brazil um, based in Sao Paulo and then I had the I, I, I was lucky enough to be invited by um, colleagues at other universities in Brazil, uh, the, University, the Federal University of Paraná in Curitiba, for instance, um, uh, Unicamp University in the state of São Paulo, in Campinas, and elsewhere. So I, I gave various talks, not to do with the Cyclops, but um, so I got to know uh, colleagues and students, and um, I was impressed one's impressed by Brazil in, in many ways, and I, I don't want to sound like a, a, a starry-eyed tourist, but one is impressed, and uh, especially if you come from a small mountainous um, country like Greece, I, I, I can almost imagine the first reaction of uh, the Portuguese in, in the uh, 1500s and 1600s, coming from uh, a country very much like, like Greece, uh, poor in natural resources, highly mountainous, um, unpromising, and then seeing this, this, this jungle of opportunity and vegetation and, and extraordinary uh, peoples. So I relished, I enjoyed um, Brazil as a tourist, and I subsequently returned. I have returned not as a tourist, not as a repeat tourist, but somehow as a pilgrim to a country with which uh, I have some sort of affinity, but no connections, no imaginable or noble connections, um, apart from um, my admiration for the uh, dynamism of, of the society um, and the, the, the interest at least in, in uh, university quarters, interest in Hellenic culture, in Greek culture. I arrived in Brazil, as I said, in 2013. It was late July. I didn't really need an advance team from the Greek Ministry of Tourism um, to preach the virtues of ancient Greece and or ancient Greek culture. Uh, I had a, a ready and almost captive audience, people who were um, fond of things Greek, deeply interested, deeply read, deeply engaged, engagé in Greek culture. So from the word go, it was a win-win situation at both ends. And um, I, as I said, I'm very grateful um, for the impetus, the hospitality, um, uh, given by my Brazilian hosts. I, I carry on, I keep on returning to Brazil, trying to improve my uh, rather shaky uh, Portuguese. 
um, and I dare say I am now um, venturing um, to lecture in, in um, Portuguese. Um, so Brazil is, is, is a, a place which, uh, or a country, or really a sort of concatenation of uh, an accumulation of cultures which is uh, easily misunderstood and easily um, reduced to a series of cliches. But it is a, a country with a, th um, a thriving intellectual culture. Um, and I, uh, so never mind the beach culture and all that, there is a, an extraordinary and thriving um, literary scene, intellectual scene. Uh, Brazilians, like most North, uh, uh, Latin Americans, uh, are fond of Greek philosophy and Greek tragedy. So, um, I, I do think that the um, future for the classics and the study of the reception of, of um, Hellenic culture um, lies largely in, in South America. I had a chance to visit Uruguay, the um, University of the, the Republic in Montevideo. I spent two days in Argentina, um, Argentina as they call it, in, in Portuguese Brazilian. Um, I'm, I'm ready to, to move to Brazil, and, and but, but, but um, duty calls first, and my commitment is to Greece, especially at this point in 